The man climbed into the back seat, silent and withdrawn. The silence in the car was thick and Kojo's fingers gripped the steering wheel. His mind raising with questions. Had he made a mistake in refusing him? Was this man really in need or was there something else he wasn't seeing? As they drove through the dimly lit street, the man's voice finally broke the silence. I know you couldn't help Ilya, and I understand. He murmured, his voice low and unsettling. Kojo felt his pulse quicken, every instinct telling him to stay on guard. His experiences had taught him the dangers of misplaced trust, and he wasn't about to let his guard down again. The ride was tense, each second dragging as Kojo focused intently on the road, determined not to let his kindness get the better of him this time. When they reached the man's destination, Kojo held his breath, ready for any surprises, but the man simply muttered a quiet thank you and slipped out of the car disappearing into the shadows. Kojo exhaled, a shiver running down his spine. He had learned that kindness without boundaries had a price, and in a world where trust was fragile, he would never again allow himself to be so easily taken advantage of. The only comforter he had at the moment was Efe's former friend, Ekuya Agege. Ekuya began to notice the changes in him. One afternoon, she brought him a small meal. Her face filled with concern. Kojo, you look like you haven't eaten in days. She said, handing him the food. You can't keep living like this. Let me help you. Kojo Boatin shook his head, forcing a weak smile. Thank you, Ekuya. But I don't want to be a burden. I have to do this on my own. Ekuya sighed, but she understood his pride. Just know that you are not alone, Kojo. If you need anything, anything at all, I'm here. Even with the support of friends like Ekuya, Kojo Boatin struggled to shake off the shame he felt. His life of stability and respect had been stripped away, leaving him vulnerable and dependent. The betrayal he suffered was more than financial. There was a deep wound that continued to haunt him, his pride scared by the harsh reality of his new life. The longer Kojo Boateng struggled, the more he began to question everything. He became cautious, wary of trusting others and increasingly distant from his friends. He tried to date again, hoping to find comfort and companionship, but each time he held back, afraid that his vulnerability would invite betrayal. He met a woman named Adobia, a kind and gentle soul who seemed genuinely interested in him. But after a few months, Adobia's patience wore thin. She had grown frustrated with his reluctance to open up and Kojo's financial struggles only added strain to the relationship. One evening, Adobia confronted him. Kojo, I don't understand why you keep pushing me away. It feels like you don't trust me. Kojo looked at her, his face shadowed with pain. It's not you, Adobia. It's just I've been through things I can't explain. I don't want to drag anyone else into my mess. Adobia sighed, her disappointment evident. I care about you, Kojo, but I need stability too. I can't keep waiting for you to let me in. With that, she left and Kojo found himself alone once again. The sting of rejection reminded him of everything he had lost. His confidence further eroded by the constant cycle of failed connections and missed chances. He tried dating again, but he found himself pulling back each time, unable to shake the fear of rejection. Just when things seemed darkest, a glimmer of hope appeared. Clifford, an old friend and former colleague, reached out, offering Kojo small freelance marketing gigs whenever possible. The jobs were few and far between, but they gave Kojo something to hold on, a reminder of his skills and the potential he still possessed. At times, his mentor, Mr. Buedi, would call him in for consulting work, providing not only small income and also a sense of purpose and respect that Kojo had long missed. These moments, though brief, helped him believe that he might find a way out of the struggle. With time, Kojo began to rebuild, slowly gaining back his confidence. Though he had lost nearly everything, he found strength in the hardships he had endured. Each day of struggle had taught him resilience, the importance of boundaries, and the wisdom to guard his kindness. With the help of his true friends and his own determination, he started to see that perhaps, despite the pain and betrayal, a new beginning.
women was possible. Yao Ziggy's life too unraveled in the months following a faced betrayal. With Koju's support gone, his lavish lifestyle could no longer sustain itself. People began to see him for who he was, an opportunist, riding off the goodwill of others. Rumors spread that Yao had crossed Koju and doors began to close for him. Former friends distanced themselves and even his quick money schemes no longer worked. With no one left to bail him out, Yao spiraled, forced to confront the emptiness he had built for himself. Every attempt to call Kojo went ignored, a painful reminder of the loyalty he had thrown away. After what felt like a never-ending stretch of hardship, Kojo Boateng started to see small signs of progress. Despite these small steps forward, the trauma of betrayal lingered, especially in matters of the heart. Love felt like a luxury he could no longer afford and his past relationships left him cautious, building walls around his heart. Kojo began to recognize that his journey was teaching him resilience he never knew he had. The small victories, like completing freelance projects and repaying small portions of his debt, fooled him. Slowly, he embraced his struggles as a testament to his strength. He found solace in his work and the friends who had stuck by him. Over time, he began to rebuild his confidence, no longer defined by the betrayal he had suffered. He stopped dwelling on his past life, focusing instead on the future he wanted to create. And through this transformation, he found a strange sense of freedom, realizing that even though he had been stripped of everything, he gained something far more valuable, his own inner strength. Meanwhile, Efe was living the life she had always dreamed of. She had used Kojo's money as capital to build her own business empire in South Africa. A string of luxury boutiques and upscale salons that catered to the wealthy. She was making headlines as a young entrepreneur, celebrated for her rags to riches story that no one knew was built on someone else's sacrifice. But as her empire grew, so did her loneliness. Efe often found herself looking back, memories of Kojo surfacing despite her success. In quiet moments, guilt gnawed at her. She knew she had shattered the life of a good man, and all for wealth she was beginning to realize wasn't fulfilling. Success, it turned out, was hollow when it came with betrayal. Four years after leaving, Efe returned to Accra. She arrived in a luxurious Rolls Royce Phantom. Her presence, a stark contrast to the modest lifestyle she'd left behind. As she walked through her old neighborhood, her eyes scanned the familiar street, wondering how Kojo had fared after her betrayal. Her first stop was Equia Agege's salon. Equia was mid-conversation with a customer when she spotted Efe, shock and anger flickering across her face. She immediately crossed her arms, eyes narrowing as Efe approached. What are you doing here? Equia asked coldly. Efe looked down, guilt weighing her shoulders. I came to make things right, Agege. I know what I did was wrong, but I want to help Kojo. Equia scoffed, shaking her head. You think you can come back with your fancy clothes and cars and fix what you broke with money, isn't it? You took everything from him, Efe. He was left with nothing. Efe's face fell. Please, just let me talk to him. Reluctantly, Equia agreed. Though she warned Efe that forgiveness was unlikely, she passed on Efe's message to Kojo, who initially refused. But eventually, curiosity got the better of him. He agreed to meet, though his guard was firmly up. Kojo and Efe met at a quiet cafe in Accra. As soon as she walked in, Kojo barely recognized her. She wore designer clothes, her confidence radiant, but he could only see the woman who had left him with nothing. Thank you for meeting with me, Kojo. Efe started, her voice subdued. Kojo's gaze was cold, his tone even colder. Why are you here, Efe? To gloat? Efe shook her head, looking genuinely remorseful. I know I have no right to ask, but I need to tell you, I regret everything. She began, her eyes avoiding his. I thought money would make me happy, but it hasn't. I came back because I realized that what I did to you destroyed not just your life, but mine too. Kojo listened in silence, his expression unreadable. Ife's voice trembled as she continued. 
I want to help you, Kojo. I know I don't deserve your forgiveness, but if you'd let me, I want to repay you everything I took and more. After their conversation, Kojo was left conflicted. He had sworn never to let Ife back into his life, but her offer was significant. Ife wanted to help him start his own business, a logistics company that would fill a need she believed was profitable. She offered him the funds to set up an office, hire a team, and market his services. After days of contemplation and discussing it with Ikria Agege, Clayford, and Mr. Bwedi, Kojo reluctantly agreed to partner with her, though he kept her at a cautious distance. He saw it as a business opportunity, a way to finally move beyond his struggles and achieve something for himself. The business started slowly, with Kojo putting in long hours to establish a reputation. Effie, committed to making things right, brought in contract, resources, and marketing expertise. Though their past was complicated, they managed to work together professionally. Their partnership marked by a mutual respect that grew with time. Over months, the logistics company began to flourish. Koju's commitment and integrity attracted clients, and with Effie's connections, they expanded rapidly, securing contracts with large corporations. Slowly, Koju was returning to the life he had once dreamed of, but this time, he was more grounded, cautious, and wise. One evening, as they finished a late meeting at the office, Efe opened up to Kojo in a rare moment of vulnerability. You know, I didn't think I'd ever feel happiness again, she admitted. The money meant nothing after I lost everything that mattered. Kojo looked at her, his expression softening. You see, sometimes it takes losing everything to understand what really matters. They shared a moment of silence, each reflecting on their journey. Ife looked down, guilt flickering in her eyes. Do you think we can ever move past what happened? Kojo sighed, glancing out the window. Forgiveness isn't easy, but I'm learning that it's possible to build something new, even from the worst mistakes. Their relationship, though scared, began to mend, slowly evolving from bitterness to understanding. Kojo realized that Ife had changed, that she was genuinely remorseful, though the pain of her betrayal would never fully disappear. He found himself letting go of his resentment. While Kojo and Efe were finding peace, Yaozigi returned unexpectedly, seeking closure of his own. He approached Kojo with a nervous energy, his face lined with regret. Kojo, Yao started, his voice wavering. I know I hurt you in ways I can't even begin to make up for. I don't expect anything from you, but I had to apologize to own up to what I did. Kojo listened, his emotions mixed as Yao recounted his role in the betrayal. It was my idea to take the money. I pushed Efe to do it, convinced her it was harmless. I betrayed you first. She got caught up in my greed. Yao Zigi's confession left Kojo stunned, a mix of anger and sadness flooding him. I trusted you, Yao. I thought you were my brother. Yao nodded, his face stricken with guilt. I know, and I've lost everything because of it. I don't deserve your forgiveness, but I needed to tell you the truth. Kojo Bwatin took a deep breath, his voice steady but pained. I appreciate your honesty, but forgiveness doesn't erase what you did. I hope you find peace, but that's your journey to walk alone. Yao nodded, accepting his fate. He turned and left, leaving Kojo with a sense of finality and surprisingly relief. For the first time, he felt free. As the business continued to thrive, Kojo found himself growing closer to Effie. They shared long hours at the office, late dinners after work, and quiet moments of understanding that went beyond words. Their bond deepened, rooted in a hardened trust and a shared history of mistakes and growth. One evening, while discussing a new expansion plan, Kojo looked at Effie, a softness in his gaze. I never thought you would end up here. Together, after everything, Effie smiled, her eyes misty. Neither did I. I spent so many years regretting my choices, but if this is the future we can build, then maybe it was all worth it. Their hands touched briefly, a spark of warmth passing between them. For the first time in years, Kuju felt a genuine hope for love, a love that had survived betrayal, anger, and forgiveness, 
In the following months, Kojo and Ife's relationship blossomed into something stronger than either of them had imagined. They were no longer bound by the past, but by a future they were building together. One founded on mutual respect, resilience, and honesty. The logistics company became one of the leading firms in Accra, and Kojo finally found the financial stability he had once lost. They began to give back to their community, establishing a mentorship program for young entrepreneurs who lacked the resources to succeed. Just as Kojo and Ife's relationship was solidifying, Ohima, Kojo's former colleague and longtime friend, returned to Accra after a long work project abroad. Ohima had always held a quiet admiration for Kojo, hoping that he would one day see her as more than a friend. Seeing him with Efe reignited feelings she thought she had left behind. One evening, Kojo Boateng ran into Ohima at a networking event in the city. She looked radiant, exuding a new confidence that immediately reminded Kojo of the friendship they had shared during his darkest times. Ohima, thrilled to see him, invited him for a coffee catch-up, which Kojo gladly accepted. As they reminisced about old times, the laughter and warmth between them returned naturally, as though no time had passed. Their conversation shifted to Kojo's recent successes. Ohima congratulated him on the business growth and new clients, but when Kojo mentioned Efe's involvement in the business, a shadow crossed Ohima's face. Efe? She repeated, her tone filled with surprise. So, you two are working together again? Kojo nodded. Yes, I didn't think it would ever happen, but people change, Ohima. She's been helping me rebuild, and we are building a new life. Ohima's expression softened, but Kojo Boateng could sense an unspoken disappointment in her gaze. Later, after more conversation and long reflective pause, Ohima's feelings finally surfaced. Kojo, she began, her voice hesitant. I've always cared about you. When Effie left, I hoped I could be there for you, that maybe one day you'd see me differently. You deserve someone who won't betray you. I don't want to see you get hurt again. Her words hung in the air, honest and filled with emotion. Kojo felt a pang of guilt and sadness. Ohima had been loyal, supportive, and patient with him standing by him through the hardest times. Ohema, he replied gently, I respect you deeply. You are one of the few people who stood by me, and I'm grateful for that. But the past has taught me that forgiveness and growth are possible. Efe and I have changed. She's been remorseful, and I believe we've found a way to move forward. Ohema looked away, a mixture of sadness and acceptance in her expression. Though she understood his choice, she knew she'd have to move on. Just heart had found a way back to Efe, and that was a part she could no longer be part of. Their friendship settled into a respectful distance. Though disappointed, she hoped Kojo would find happiness, even if it wasn't with her. Kojo and Efe continued to grow closer. Their relationship wasn't perfect. They argued, had moments of doubt, and occasionally faced the shadows of the past. But these challenges only strengthened their bond. Kojo and Efe had come to understand that love was not about erasing past mistakes, but about learning from them and finding a way forward. Kojo and Efe's story was one of transformation. It was a journey from betrayal to forgiveness, from heartbreak to healing, and from resentment to resilience. The moral lesson of this tale is that being kind is a beautiful quality, but kindness without boundaries can lead to deep betrayal and heartbreak. True strength lies in knowing when to give and when to guard ourselves from those who may take advantage. In love, as in life, we must learn to set limits and protect our hearts, allowing trust only for those who have earned it. Forgiveness isn't easy, but it can open doors to a future we never imagined, built on the hard-earned strength and wisdom we gain through life's trials. If this story moved you, share it with someone who might need a reminder of the power of forgiveness and second chances. Don't forget to subscribe to Tales of Ako, like this video, and let me know what you think about this tale in the comment section. I will see you same time in the next one. Bye!